you're about to learn which 12 of our contestants have been chosen as semi-finalists. So let's bring back all 72 of the girls in their young Edwardian outfits by Arpeggia. Here are the candidates for Miss Universe of 1976. During the past week, our panel of Miss Universe judges has seen all of the contestants several times. Their preliminary votes were tabulated secretly, and the 12 young ladies with the highest scores are about to become our semi-finalists. Now, they have no idea which of them have been selected, but the names are listed on this card. They are not in alphabetical order. Now, before we begin, I want to say good luck to each of you. Good luck, girls. Here we go with the 12 semi-finalists. The very first name on the list is Miss England. <laughs> Semi-finalist number two is Miss Curacao. And here is a selection I believe this audience will approve. Miss Hong Kong! <laughs> Our fourth semi-finalist is Miss Israel! Here comes Miss Argentina. And we are halfway there with Miss Australia. are six of our 12 semi-finalists. There are six more names to go, and one of those names is Miss Norway. <laughs> Semi-finalist number eight is Miss Chile. The next name on the list of semi-finalists is Miss Columbia. Next, Miss Wales. I've announced ten names. There are only two names left, and one of them is Miss Venezuela. And now the last name on the card, the last girl who has a chance to become Miss Universe is Miss Scotland. Congratulations, semi-finalists. One of you will be Miss Universe of 1976. Miss Universe delegates this year traveled a total of more than 500,000 miles to get here. Now, this map shows the routes of some of the contestants from their homes to Hong Kong. The girl who comes from farthest away is Miss Brazil, way down here. She, when she arrived by Cathay Pacific, she had traveled just about halfway around the world. 
As you can see, Hong Kong's right here on the coast of China. The total area of Hong Kong is less than 400 square miles, but the population is over 4 million, making it just about the busiest and most densely populated place in the world. It's a very exciting place for the crowning of the 25th Miss Universe in history. The pageant will continue after this message from Chris. I know all of you would like to get to know our 12 semi-finalists a little better, so let's do it. Beginning with Miss Curacao. Will you come right down here to me, please? She is Annika Dickhausen. She's 18 years old. And Miss Curacao, what do you do? I work in Curacao by the Central Bank of San Ellison City. You work in a bank? Yes, sir. If you are Miss Universe, you know you'll win $10,000 in cash? Yes, and then? Her excitement is tremendous, isn't it? What are you going to do with ten thousand um, dollars? Save it in the bank for later. These gentlemen. For later use. You didn't hear the last of that. I think you'll approve even more. What did you say? I save it in the bank for later use. For later use. There are many bankers in Hong Kong who will approve. Have you learned any Chinese since you've been here? Uh, some words, yes. I know the most important things, like my room number when I have to ask my key. Don't. Do not announce your room number on television. No. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Curacao. Miss <laughs> Israel, right down here with you. She is Rina Messinger. She's 20 years old, and she is a university student. And what are you studying, Rina? Aerodynamics. What do you want to do someday? Uh, to work on this subject. To work in, in the uh, air industry in some way. Yeah. You're a glider pilot now, aren't you? Yes, I am. Uh huh. You teach gliding, do you? I also teach gliding, yes. Yes. And do you have a boyfriend back in Israel? Yes, I do. <laughs> have you heard from him? He called me yesterday morning and he said, uh, everybody wish you good luck except me. <laughs> <laughs> you see, if she wins, she'll be traveling for a year. Thank you, Miss Israel. Miss Australia, let you and I talk. Miss Australia is Julie Ann Ismay, 24, of Sydney. And how did you become a contestant in the pageant, Miss Australia? Well, I was modeling um, a swimsuit on a television program. And the prize was a trip to Perth, where my brother lives, and I hadn't seen him for a year. So I thought I'd love a trip to Perth, so I entered it, and I was lucky enough to win. Uh-huh. Is he your only brother? No, I have three brothers. How old is the youngest? Ten. What did he think of you, of you becoming Miss Australia? Oh, he thought it was fantastic. Every time he brings his friends around, though, I'm always in jeans and hair rollers, and so they're not very impressed. <laughs> well, don't... <laughs> this is a, only a two-hour show, so you can get back in your jeans very quickly. Oh, good. All right. Thank you, Miss Australia. <laughs> Miss Chile? She is Maria Veronica Summers. She's 21 years old. She's from Santiago, a university student studying biology, and she speaks very little English. Mm, very little. <laughs> You have beautiful eyes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you have a lovely figure. I bet you're a miserable cook. What? I bet slowly I don't understand. She doesn't understand that. <laughs> she understands what she wants to understand. Uh, yes, yes. yes, that's right. Thank you, Miss Chili. That was a marvelous interview. Oh, it's all... It's all over. Oh, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Miss Wales. Miss Wales is Sean Addy Jones, and you're a recreational therapist. No, that's wrong. I that's think wrong? An aftercare. That's out. What do you do? I work in an aftercare home for emotionally disturbed people. I see. Now, aren't you the one I heard in a rehearsal uh, talking with the girls about acupuncture? Yes, I've had acupuncture. You have? Yes, I had a paralyzed thumb and it was cured. By acupuncture? Yes. Did you come here to Hong Kong for it? No, in Liverpool. Liverpool. <laughs> Everybody goes to Liverpool for acupuncture these days. Thank you, Miss Wales. Miss Scotland? This is Carol Grant, 19. She is from Glasgow. And uh, what do you think of Hong Kong? I think Hong Kong reminds me of back home in Scotland, particularly the scenery and, of course, the friendly people. This is like Scotland? No! 
No, um, I think the scenery. Some parts of Hong Kong remind me of Scotland. Uh-huh. Have you learned some Chinese since you've been here? No, I haven't, but um, I'm sure I could learn some. <laughs> I'm sure there are some gentlemen here who'd be happy to teach you Chinese. Yes, Miss Scotland. I don't know about that. <laughs> Thank you very much for talking with me. And you met our first six semi-finalists. We'll meet the rest in a few moments. Ago, but I never knew until my Pan Am jet landed in Hong Kong that there really is a noonday gun. Nobody really knows how the tradition actually started, but we do know that way back in 1901, the Navy issued an order that the gun must be fired every day at noon until further notice. And since you're spending these couple of hours with us in Hong Kong, we wanted you to see this daily happening. So a couple of days ago, we filmed the firing of the gun, and here it is. And now you can say you've seen one of the most famous tourist attractions in the Orient. We'll be back in a moment, but first a message from Cam May. Six more semi-finalists to meet, beginning with Miss Venezuela, right down here to me. She's Judith Castillo, she's from Caracas, and she is in her last year of high school. What did you say, Judith? I speak Chinese. You speak Chinese? No, some word. <laughs> Just some words. Do you speak English? Yes, little and slowly. Very slowly. <laughs> yes, very slowly. ¿Qué hace usted en Venezuela? Estudio y trabajo. She studies and she works. Yes. ¿Qué estudia usted? El, el último año de bachillerato. La, high school. Yes. ¿En el futuro va sí. a colegio? Sí, ingeniería química. She wants to be a chemical engineer, and she's going to college after she gets out of high school. Yes. Now, I heard her, at one of the affairs that we've had, speak Chinese. And I'm going to try to get her to tell you what she said. Lo que decía en chino en su dicho. Hoy. Ahora. Ahorita. Koei, sin san, tai tai, and siu che. Kam yan, poen yan, we wen you soy lak, toi piu. Nankao yi go wei, king mi san fun bing han, jo go wei, gang go, king hong fai la, to che. Thank you, Ms. Columbia. Ms. Columbia, come here. Ms. Columbia is Maria Elena Reyes, she's 20, she's from Bogota, she's a university student, and uh, habla inglés. Little. Little. ¿Qué hace usted? Estudio odontología, cuarto año. She studied. Yes. ¿Qué, qué estudia qué? Odonto dentist. Dentist. Odontología, odontology. Dentista? ¿Usted? Yo. She wants to be a dentist. Yes. <laughs> uh, ¿Cómo uh, es posible uh, camar uh, uh, cuando un paciente es nervioso? ¿Qué hace usted? Cuando un paciente es nervioso, lo miro y trato de calmarlo y trabajamos, ¿entendió? Sí, sí. Yeah. I think. I asked her what she did when a patient was nervous, and she says she calms them, right? Sí. <laughs> Look right out here at this camera. Smile, real big, big smile. No necesita un dentista. No. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Columbia. Miss Norway, right here, please. Miss Norway is Benta Lee Hogue. She's from Oslo. She's a secretary. Yes. And uh, Benta, congratulations on becoming one of the 12 semi-finalists. Thank you. Yes. How tall are you? <laughs> Taller than you. <laughs> Uh, 
Fred, will you come hold me up here, please? And you're a secretary. Yes. So you take shorthand. No. You don't take shorthand? No. You sound like some of the secretaries in the United States these days. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Norway. Miss Argentina. This is Lillian De Asti, 19, of Buenos Aires, a university student. And what are you studying? Agronomy. Agronomy? Agronomy. You want to be a farmer? <laughs> eh? You're... Va a estar un campesino? No, no campesino, sino administración de campo. Oh, okay. Estudios, estudios. ¿Qué quiere hacer en el futuro? Eh, estudios sobre el campo, sobre la tierra. You're, going to, you're studying... Uh, yes, yes. The oh, agriculture yes. now. Yeah. But then you don't want to be a farmer. In the future, yes. In the future, yes. yes. My Spanish is so perfect, I don't know why we're having a problem here at all. But well, you'll be the prettiest farmer in Argentina. Thank you very much. <laughs> Miss Hong Kong. Miss Hong Kong is Rowena Lamb. She's 18, and she works in a travel agency. And Rowena, this audience obviously loves you. What would you like to say to them? I love them too, very much. Well, Thank I think you that's, very much. I think that's nice. Is it quite a thrill having the pageant here in Hong Kong? Yes, I think it's absolutely grand because um, instead of myself going to other countries, um, I have the, all the other girls coming to visit me, and I can tell them about my lovely island here and show them around. Yes, and you are certainly a lovely representative of Hong Kong. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you. Miss England. Miss England is Pauline Davis, she's 22, and she's from Manchester, and you were chosen as the most photogenic girl in the pageant, weren't you? Yes, I think probably there's something wrong with the cameras. No. I mentioned a moment ago that we're in one of the financial centers of the world. I think you'll agree this is living proof that the English pound is sound today, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Thank you, Miss England. Thank you. Well, you've met our 12 semi-finalists. Which one will become Miss Universe of 1976? We asked each of the contestants to bring a baby picture to Hong Kong with her. And I have a few of the semi-finalist pictures here that are just great, and I'd like to show them to you, okay? The first one is Miss Wales. Sean A.D. Jones. That's the same face today, incidentally. And this is Miss Columbia Maria Elena Reyes. Long before she dreamed of becoming, of being in the Miss Universe pageant. This is Miss England Pauline Davis. Here she is in 1976. They all have that special something that made them adorable babies. And they're even more beautiful as young women. And we'll be right back. But first, a message from Cheer. I'd like to introduce a gentleman who has been our host here in Hong Kong, His Excellency, the Acting Governor of Hong Kong, Sir Dennis Roberts. A distinguished panel of international celebrities is judging the Miss Universe pageant this year, and I'd like to have you meet them now. First, the dynamic Swedish actress, film, and television star, Britt Eklund. <laughs> the brilliant young motion picture director whose films include Chinatown, Rosemary's Baby, and The Tenant, Roman Polanski. world-famous Chinese-American artist whose watercolors are in the permanent collections of more than 40 museums, Dong Kingman! <laughs> and the eldest son of the Count of Paris, a distinguished businessman, Prince Henri de Orléans. <laughs> Miss
Miss Universe of 1966, a native of Sweden, now a world-famous photographer's model, Margareta Arvidsson Stupakov. The chairman of the board of Gucci Incorporated, designers, manufacturers, and sellers of leather goods, shoes, apparel, and perfume, Dr. Aldo Gucci. The chairman of Jardine Matheson and Company, the oldest and largest trading company in Hong Kong, David Newbiggie. The Brazilian-born actress who has played leading roles in dozens of European and American films, Florinda Volcan. <laughs> the former pro football player who is now one of Hollywood's outstanding stars on both sides of the camera, Fred Williamson. Chairman and Managing Director of Shaw Brothers Limited, whose Shaw Movie Town is one of the world's best-known motion picture production centers, a giant in the international film community, Run Run Shaw! <laughs> one of the world's great prima ballerinas, the international star whose autobiography is a current bestseller, Dame Margot Fontaine. Thank you very much, judges. Now, the folk dances of Hong Kong are based on Chinese legends that go back thousands of years. We wanted you to see the beauty and color of these dances. So choreographer Lao Sin Ming staged a production that takes us from the quiet beauty of the lotus dance to the vigor and spirit of the dance of the walking lion. Here are the very talented folk and martial arts dancers of Hong Kong.
back of one of the two fishing junks that have been built on the stage of the Lee Theater just for this show. As a matter of fact, the whole theater has been redesigned for the pageant. And for two weeks, carpenters, painters, electricians have been working day and night to get it ready. Throughout the show, you'll see three of these lovely screens. One decorated with flowers, this one, one with a waterfall scene, and one with dragons. According to the Chinese calendar, this is the year of the dragon. And our art director, Don Shirley, has created some of the nicest dragons you'd ever want to meet. Now, back here is our giant turntable. Let me show you if I can. The girls had to learn to make some very quick exits and entrances up and down these steps, and they were moving at a rather rapid clip, and that took some practice. And then over here, we have our magnificent, beautiful waterfall. They helped to make the whole theater look so pretty in this stage. The contestants spent a whole week in this theater, and it will be a week they'll remember all their lives. We'll be back with a swimsuit competition right after this message from Downey. Now we're ready for the official swimsuit competition. Earlier in the show, you saw all 72 of our contestants in a special swimsuit parade. Now that we know who our 12 semifinalists are, only those 12 girls will take part in the official swimsuit judging. The swimsuits are all alike, but the young ladies who are wearing them are one of a kind. So judges and viewers, watch closely as we present our 12 semi-finalists in the Miss Universe Swimsuit Competition. Miss England. Pauline is 22 years old. She stands 5'7 inches tall and weighs 126 pounds. She has auburn hair and hazel eyes. Miss Curacao. Annika is 5 feet 6 inches tall and weighs 116 pounds. She's 18 years old and has brown hair and brown eyes. Miss Hong Kong. Rowena is 18 years old. She has black hair and brown eyes. She weighs 94 pounds and she's five feet, two and three quarter inches tall. Miss Israel. is 20 years old. She weighs 119 pounds. She's five feet seven and a half inches tall. Her hair is brown and her eyes are blue. Miss Argentina. Dylan is 19 years old. She has brown hair and green eyes. She weighs 123 pounds. She's five feet seven. Miss Australia. Julie's, let's see, she's 24 years old. She's 122 pounds and five feet eight inches tall. Honey blonde hair and green eyes. Miss Norway. Blonde and blue-eyed, Vente is 21 years old. She's 5 feet 10 inches tall and weighs 128 pounds. Miss Chile. Maria has green eyes, too, and light brown hair. She stands 5 feet 6 inches tall, weighs 122 pounds, and she's 21 years old. Miss Wales. Sean 
is an 18-year-old blonde with blue eyes. She's 5 feet 4, and she weighs 108 pounds. Miss Columbia. Green eyes. She weighs 125 pounds and she's 5 feet 7. Miss Scotland. Carol is 5 feet 6 and a half inches tall and weighs 112 pounds. She's 19 years old. She has strawberry blonde hair and blue eyes. Miss Venezuela. <laughs> Judith is 18 years old. She's 5 feet 8 inches tall and weighs 113 pounds. Her hair is black and her eyes are brown. And there are the Miss Universe semifinalists in the swimsuit competition. like Hong Kong unless we made sure they had plenty of time to see all the sights. So between our pageant rehearsals, we made sure all of the contestants really got to know Hong Kong. The sightseeing tour began the moment their plane arrived at Kai Tak Airport because the runway is adjacent to Hong Kong's magnificent harbor. They really had a sight of what a view. On this flight, you've just got to have a window seat. The next morning, the Hong Kong Yamati Ferry Company provided a triple-decker boat, and the first official tour was of the harbor itself. The weather was fine, and everyone became a sailor for a day. Back on shore, the girls headed for the stores. Hong Kong is famous for its shopping, and 72 beautiful bargain hunters just could not resist. Who can? In the evening, they had dinner at a Chinese supper club, and the entertainment was delightful. A combination of vaudeville, opera, and musical comedy all in one. A few days later, there was a trip aboard a jet foil to Macau, a Portuguese province only 40 miles from Hong Kong. And in less than two hours, the contestants were transported from the Orient to a typical Portuguese community. Of course, most of the sightseeing was in the daytime. At night, there were parties, dances, and dinners, and everyone was able to unwind, relax, and have fun. One of the most interesting trips was the bus tour of the New Territories, the large rural area of, area of Hong Kong. The girls visited farms, schools, and homes, and even saw a junk from communist China. The New Territories border on China, so the girls were able to look over that country, too. You can see what a great time our contestants have had here and why they'll always think of 1976 as the year I went to Hong Kong. Now, watch this message from Joy. While we're waiting for the evening gown competition with our 12 semi-finalists, all of the other delegates would like to let you know just how they feel about Hong Kong and its wonderful people. Here they are with a special friendship medley, the Miss Universe candidates for 1976.
Chen Man plays it for us so beautifully, I'd like you to meet some former winners of the Miss Universe crown who have been in Hong Kong all week helping us celebrate this 25th anniversary of the pageants. You've already met Margareta Arvidsson Stupikov, Miss Universe of 1966, who is one of our judges this year. And I'd like to introduce three more former title holders. First, Miss Universe of 1959, now the wife of one of Japan's most popular film stars and the mother of three children, Akiko Kojima Takabata. And next, Miss Universe of 1973, a beautiful lady from the Philippines who traveled all the way to Athens, Greece to win her crown. Margarita Moran Floriendo. We're especially pleased that on this silver anniversary, the very first Miss Universe could be a part of the festivities. She's originally from Finland, but now lives in Manila. Miss Universe of 1952, Army Pusella Hilario. Thank you very much, ladies. It's always so nice for us to be able to see all of you again. The Miss Universe Evening Gown Competition is next, and we'll be back to see it after this message from Duncan Hines. The young lady who becomes Miss Universe of 1976 will enjoy a full year of excitement and travel to all parts of the world. And she'll also enjoy more fabulous prizes than any Miss Universe in history. She'll receive a $10,000 cash award, a $10,000 personal appearance contract, and a $2,500 Sarah Coventry scholarship. And these magnificent prizes, too. A natural black llama ranch mink coat from the International Flemington Fur Company. A wardrobe of accurate sports and evening quartz watches with elegant bracelets and high fashion color dials from Seiko. A CB radio for your car. And home or away, keep in touch with this solid state Motorola CB radio. 
from organically grown by Arpeggia, a wardrobe of sweaters, shirts, and jeans, featuring a long hooded cardigan and cowl neck pullover. The Corolla SR5 lift bag, one of the new generation of Corollas from Toyota. Fine quality for the world's most beautiful woman. And one of the many countries our new Miss Universe will visit is the Dominican Republic, where the 1977 pageant will be held in the capital city of Santo Domingo. Tonight, we're honored to have with us the Secretary of State for Tourism and Information of the Dominican Republic, Mr. Pedro Morales Troncoso. Thank you, Mr. Morales. Now it's time to meet the 12 girls who are still competing for those great prizes. This time, they're wearing evening gowns they selected themselves. Now the judges over here will be watching them on a close-up television monitor in the judges' box. So they'll see each contestant just exactly the way you'll see her on your television set at home. Here we go. Here are the Miss Universe semifinalists in the evening gown competition. May I present Miss England? <laughs> Miss Cursa. Miss Hong Kong. <laughs> Miss Israel. Miss Argentina. <laughs> Miss Australia. Chile. Venezuela. <laughs> Miss Scotland.
and we have presented our 12 semi-finalists in tonight's evening gown competition. young ladies I've ever met to have a cup of jasmine tea with me. She's our reigning queen and she has less than 30 minutes left of her year as Miss Universe, Anne-Marie Potomo. Welcome. And what have you been doing when you were traveling around? What did you enjoy the, the most of all? Well, it, it was very interesting to find out about the different customs and countries and try different foods like raw fish, for example. And, of course, uh, it was nice to do a lot of dancing. I knew you'd say that because I saw you dancing one time. Uh, this is probably the longest place you've been in one, one time, in one place. Two weeks you spent here in Hong Kong, right? What did you do with all your free time? I've done a lot of shopping and uh, a lot of sightseeing with my parents. Shopping and more shopping. Yes. <laughs> well, whatever you do, Anne-Marie, we wish you continued... Good luck and success. The pageant will continue after these words from Sure. You've seen all 12 of our semi-finalists in informal interviews, in swimsuits, and in evening gowns. And if you're doing your own judging at home, you know how tough it's going to be for our pageant judges here to select five finalists. For that reason, we're going to give them one final chance to see each of the semi-finalists close up. Then they'll have to narrow the field from 12 to 5. So all you judges here in the theater and all of you judges there at home, it's decision-making time as we present the Miss Universe semi-finalists for 1976. First, Miss England. Miss England was born in 1953, which according to the Chinese calendar was the year of the snake. Her zodiac sign is Leo, and that usually means someone with a very outgoing personality. Miss Curacao. Miss Curacao was born in the year of the dog, 1958. Her sign is Aries, which means she's a very independent thinker and always seems to be where the action is. Miss Hong Kong. Miss Hong Kong also was born in the year of the dog under the sign of Aries. She has energy to spare and uses it to seek out new experiences. Miss Israel. Miss Israel is an Aquarian who was born in 1956, the year of the monkey. She's very inventive and she's successful because she doesn't believe in the word impossible. Miss Argentina. Miss Argentina was born under the sign of the fishes, Pisces, in 1957, the year of the rooster. Pisces people can't stand pompousness and they stay far away from anyone on an ego trip. Miss Australia. Australia was born in 1952, the year of the dragon. Her sign is Taurus, and that means she has a talent for finding good in everyone. But watch out, Taurians can be very stubborn. Miss Norway. Miss Norway's sign is Aries. She was born in 1955, the year of the goat. She can be impatient, but she's very sensitive and sympathetic to the problems of others. Miss Chile. Miss Chile was born in 1954, the year of the horse. Her sign is cancer, which means she exudes charm. She gets along with everyone, so she's very, very popular. Miss Columbia. Pisces is Miss Columbia's sign. She was born in 1956, the year of the monkey. She's helplessly romantic and very comforting when someone needs help. Miss Whale. Miss Wales is a Scorpio who was born in 1957, the year of the rooster. Scorpios are ambitious. They want what the good things in life are and they're willing to work hard to get them. Miss Venezuela. Miss Venezuela was born in the year of the dog, 1958. She's a Gemini and moves at a very fast pace. In fact, most Geminis can accomplish several tasks at the, at the same time. Miss Scotland. Miss Scotland is a Capricorn, and she was born in 1956, the year of the monkey. She's serious and persevering, even when there are roadblocks in her way. But she's determined to succeed. 
And these are the 12 semi-finalists. Now, judges, please choose five finalists for the title of Miss Universe of 1976. practicing with chopsticks way back at the Miss USA pageant last May. If I can get them open, maybe I can use them. I really have got pretty good at it. I'm going to show you. Need my napkin just in case. See, now you stick one between your thumb and fourth finger, like this, okay? Then the other one goes between your finger, middle finger, and your fourth finger, like this. Then you just bring the sticks together around a piece of meat. Oh, that's so beautiful. Or vegetable. And you kick it up. Like this. See? Sometimes. <laughs> Eating rice is the most difficult, but the Chinese have the same problem, too. So they just bring their rice bowls up to their mouths, and they just... Have at it. You're not any better than I am with chopsticks. Well, if most of the food stays in your plate, don't worry. Just think of it as an excellent way to lose weight. We'll learn tonight who the five finalists are right after this message from Crest. Now we're going to learn which five of our 12 semi-finalists still have a chance to become Miss Universe of 1976. Steve Gilbert, may I have the list, please? Thank you very much. The judges' ballots are tabulated by the accounting firm of Ernst & Ernst. And this list brings us to the second most important moment in this pageant. Here are the five finalists for Miss Universe of 1976. The first is Miss Venezuela. <laughs> Our second finalist is Miss Israel. Number three on the list is Miss Wales. The fourth to join them is Miss Scotland. of our five finalists is Miss Australia. Congratulations, finalists. Now, ladies, the judges have only one more job to do, and it's the most important job of all. They have to decide which one of you five candidates is to be Miss Universe. To help them make that decision, I'm going to ask each of you to answer a question that will enable the judges to evaluate your poise and personality one last time. I have five questions here on this card, and we have a rather unique way to determine which question goes to which finalist. Will you step right down here, please? Take your place right here facing our judges, Miss Israel. And here we have some Chinese fortune sticks called Chimes. Now, there are five of them here. Draw one, please. Tell me the number on it. Five. Number five. I'll give you question number five. It is, if you've had a nice visit to Hong Kong, if you could visit any other country represented in this year's Miss Universe pageant, which country would you choose and why? The first country, if I could choose one of the Arab countries, I would be very glad to see, uh, but I can't. So I want to go to Africa to see the jungles, the people in the jungles. All right. Thank you, Miss Israel. Take your place again. 
And Miss Scotland, will you step down? Choose one of the fortune sticks. Tell me the number on the fortune stick. One. Number one. Question number one is, if you could meet any world leader, who would you choose and what would you talk about? Any world leader. Any world leader. Um, I think I'd choose, um, well, I think my prime minister. And what would you talk about? I talk about the country and the state the country was in, and if we could help others and all to be united together instead of being one country and another country, I think we should all be united together. Thank you, Miss Scotland. Back you go. And Miss Australia, we have three fortune sticks left. Choose one. And it says... Number three. Number three is... What is the one goal in life that you would like most to achieve? Would you move up just a step here, please? I want you to face the judges and give us your answer. I want mostly out of life, I just want to be happy. That's all. all <laughs> That's right. not much to ask. <laughs> Thank you very much, Miss Australia. Oh. Don't put it back. Now, Miss Wales. Miss Wales, right down here now, facing the judges. And which one of the last two sticks do you want? She takes that one, and it is number two. All right, question number two is, if you could devote your lifetime to solving one of the world's problems, what problem would it be, and why? Poverty, I think. I don't know how I'd solve it, but um, I admire funds that raise money for poverty, and um, I'd like to have a think, a good think about another fund to raise more money for poor people. Thank you, Miss Wales. You keep the stick. And Miss Venezuela. Miss Venezuela, right beside me. You may have any stick you want, Miss Venezuela. Which one do you wish? There are many. There are many, yes. What is it? Four. Number four. Now, would you like an interpreter to read the question to you in Spanish? Yes. Very well. May we have the interpreter up here with us, please? The number that you have there is four. Question number four is, when you meet next year's Miss Universe representative from your country, what advice are you going to give her? Cuando conozcas a, tu, a la próxima Miss Universo en tu país, ¿qué pregunta le vas a hacer? Eh, tiene que ser... Excuse me, just a moment. What advice? Oh, perdón. ¿Qué consejo le vas a dar? See, my Spanish is not as bad as you thought, huh? <laughs> Que, que para quedar entre las cinco o entre las doce o hacer un buen papel en el concurso de mi universo y dejar bien parado su país, tiene que sonreír todo el tiempo. To smile all the time. In order to have her country very well placed around the world, she has to smile everywhere. All right. Thank you very much, Miss Venezuela. Take your place with the girls. And judges, you have now seen and heard all five of our finalists. Will you please choose four runners-up and the new Miss Universe? The judges' final ballots are being tabulated right at this moment. And in just a few moments, one of our five finalists here will begin her year-long reign as Miss Universe of 1976. She'll receive her crown from the beautiful young lady who has been wearing it proudly for the past 12 months. So let's welcome our reigning queen once more and ask her to make her traditional farewell walk. Miss Universe of 1975, Anne-Marie Potomo. I will be giving up this crown and the title Miss Universe. One year ago tonight, I had many questions about what the year would hold for me. I can tell you in all sincerity that it has been the most exciting and rewarding year of my entire life. There is no time to tell you about the hundreds of fabulous experiences which I've had, but they will remain with me as treasured memories forever. I can say to all young women of the world, that if you ever have a chance to be Miss Universe, it will be the most beautiful experience of a lifetime. I would like to thank my parents, 
my chaperone Suzanne Grief and Mary Costanzo, and the wonderful Miss Universe staff. Thank you all. Thank you, Miss Universe of 1975. Finalists, it's time to hold your breath and cross your fingers because I have just been handed the judges' list of four runners-up and the new Miss Universe. The waiting is over. Miss Hong Kong of 1973, Elaine Sung, is ready with the trophies over here. And Miss Hong Kong of 1974, Jojo Chung, has the flowers over here. For one of you, the most fabulous year of your life is about to begin. Good luck to each one of you. Now, I will begin with the fourth runner-up, ladies and gentlemen. The fourth runner-up for the title of Miss Universe is Miss Australia. The third runner-up is Miss Scotland. The second runner-up is Miss Wales. Now, will both of you just step right down here, please? One of you is about to become Miss Universe. The other will be the first runner-up, a title that is a very important title because if for any reason Miss Universe cannot fulfill her obligation for the entire year, then the first runner-up becomes Miss Universe. I will announce the first runner-up first. The first runner-up is Miss Venezuela, Miss Israel, is Miss Universe. Messinger of Israel is our new Miss Universe. Will you please make your first walk as Miss Universe, greet these wonderful people of Hong Kong, and will you please, Anne-Marie Potomo, read the Miss Universe Creek. We, the young women of the universe, believe people everywhere are seeking peace, tolerance, and mutual understanding. We pledge to spread this message in every way we can, wherever we go. Miss Israel is from Tivion. She's 20 years old. She's a student at Tel Aviv University, studying aerodynamics. Her life ambition is to design aircraft. Her hobbies are ballet dancing, flying gliders, and playing tennis. She has two brothers, beautiful brown hair, beautiful blue eyes. She's five feet seven and a half inches tall, as I told you, and she's gorgeous and a happy lady. It's been a fabulous week. Thank you for watching. Bob Barker saying, see you in Santa Domingo. The Miss Universe Beauty Pageant has been brought to you by Ty. Ty gets out the dirt kids get into. And by Came for your beautiful complexion. And by Crest, the cavity fighter.
program were pre-recorded. This is Chuck Zink from Hong Kong. This is CBS.